Is there anybody out there that's still unclear about what stress and depression does to the brain? Okay then, this is the last time. This is your brain. This is your brain. This is your brain. This is your brain when you're depressed. This is your brain when you're stressed. Any questions? Yeah, that, that's my best attempt at trying to say like, hey, I think it's time that we update that classic, this is your brain on drugs PSA that some of us who are old enough might remember. Um, but I think that if we update it, it should be updated to focus on stress and depression. Because I think most of us know that stress and depression aren't good for us. But what I think a lot of us don't fully grasp or appreciate is is the extent of the damage that they can do to our bodies physiologically. And when I say broken heart, I don't mean just in the, the romantic sense. There's a variety of ways in which our hearts can be broken. A parent dies, we lose a pet and so forth. But what usually accompanies heartbreak is stress and depression in varying forms and degrees of intensity or severity. And I'm speaking from first-hand experience. So in the past, before I started therapy, um, in the past I used to have a big problem uh, ruminating and stewing on things, not being able to let go, and not fully processing what was going on. I mean, I don't even know if I would have admitted that I was actually suffering from depression when I was going through some of the things that I was going through, in my mind, I was always able to just like power through them. You know, and even if it took me like a year or two, I would make it through and that's just, it's not healthy. And what I, the way that I had processed things in the past, I believe is part of what triggered Parkinson's for me. And then, so the, the reason that I even went down this rabbit hole asking the question, can a broken heart trigger Parkinson's disease in the first place, is because I came across this amazing research about these two genetically identical twins. And what was really interesting for researchers is that these two guys, only one brother has developed Parkinson's disease, the other one hasn't. And they pretty much have lived in exactly the same area for their entire lives. So that means they've been exposed to the same like environmental toxins or the same environment um, as, as each one. So it's not like one left, you know, lived next to like some industrial site and then got Parkinson's and the other one didn't. But anyways, and what's so interesting is that basically, you know, they, they discussed, so Jack is the brother who's developed Parkinson's, Jeff I believe is the other one and he hasn't. And so what it comes down to in their minds is that Jack internalizes his, his problems, his heartbreaks, his stresses, his depression, all of that stuff, he internalizes it in a way deeper way. And so, um, and then also too, there, there were traumatic things that happened to Jack that didn't happen to his brother, Jeff. So when they talk about how traumas can accumulate, um, there's research that I also cite from Harvard about women and their hippocampus. The more bouts of depression that a woman had, the smaller her hippocampus was. And I don't think that that's exclusive to uh, women. I believe men are, are equally affected. So because we have Parkinson's and because I do believe that traumatic life events, heartbreak, chronic stress, depression, and then even without, I mean, our, our brains are already compromised essentially with an, an inability to produce dopamine. So I feel like we are just extra vulnerable and we need to, as people with Parkinson's, share each other's tips and wisdoms. I'm like, okay, this is how I get through like my biggest challenges. Um, this is how I live well. And I just think it, it's so important that we nurture the mental health of our brain and that we value it as equally important as exercise, as eating well, as staying social, because those things also help our brain. But I feel like, yeah, it's just a, like a, another level. We need like a little tool belt of like, okay, I've got this stress going on. Okay, what am I gonna use to deal with this right now? 
um, to help me, you know, feel better as soon as, as I can. By nurturing the mental health of our brains, in my mind, we need to include knowing healthy and effective ways to manage our stress and days that we're feeling sad. So I think it's important when at trying to answer this question and assessing our own ability to nurture the mental health of our brain, we need to ask ourselves, okay, like how do we process heartbreak when we experience it or any kind of stress or sadness? How long are we holding on to it for? These skills, how to cope, how to manage with stress, how to deal with heartbreak, these are, these are skills uh, that are not taught. Just imagine how much better I think that our world could be if from a very young age, kind of like history or PE, if we were taught these skills, how to cope with a crazy world sometimes, um, or just, you know, how to, you know, have skills to like navigate the playground and bullies and, and those types of things. I mean, I just, I can't even imagine how valuable some, a, a course like that would be throughout, you know, our youth into high school and then we carry into, you know, adulthood some incredibly valuable skills because the, the, the damage that can be done to the brain, it can start at a young age. And I think that's just another reason why um, that PSA program and then and us actually thinking a little bit differently about education and the skills that people need in life, because this is so fundamental because all of us deal with stress, all of us deal with heartbreak, and we process it in a different way. So it, I haven't done any genetic testing yet, but my mom has been diagnosed, my grandfather's brother had it, so I, I believe it's somewhere in our family history. And so for me, I was diagnosed when I was 38 years old in 2013. My mom was just diagnosed, she's gonna be 70 this year, um, and she was just diagnosed in March for both of us. Um, I had had just like a devastating, you know, heartbreak from just a toxic relationship that I was in for too long. And then after that, I went immediately into uh, opening up my first business and I did this solo, but just trying to secure the funds. I mean, it was an incredibly stressful time. And one year after opening it, I mean, it could just be coincidental purely, um, but that's when I got my diagnosis. My mom's diagnosis, came after the loss of uh, her brother, my uncle Mike. And I mean, my mom was devastated. He was like her best friend. They lived in the same apartment building. I mean, they just, they did everything together. And she was devastated. And I think like me, um, she certainly did not know how to process it in a healthy way. And so now I have these skills, but man, do I wish that I'd had them when I was younger. Yeah, so uh, please check those links out in the description, the TED video, the Emma Stubbs article, my article, all of them are linked in the description down below. And as always, you know, please comment if you have any words of wisdom to share with our community on, on what you think about like the PSA, for example. I mean, don't you think that would be awesome? Like just to, to get people re to really realize that like, Stress and depression, like not, they're not just, just bad for you just because they're bad for you. Like, I mean, like they can alter your brain. In that TED video, they say that, um, that higher levels of cortisol due to stress um, can actually like lead to, to Alzheimer's. So it's just, I, I don't see why then we couldn't also, you know, maybe see some connection possibly to Parkinson's. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear from you. I always love to hear from you. So thank you.